right. StreamYard is telling us it's uh, time to go and on with the show. So, welcome everybody to the tonight's Truth Proof live stream. And uh, we've got a couple of uh, fascinating guests on tonight. Guess who have worked with Paul since the onset of uh, his investigations. But we'll go into that a little, a little bit later on. So, we've got to thank everybody for uh, coming into the stream. I don't know if he's on the stream. Can you see Paul? I can't see how many he's on. I've just got a list of people up here, but um, Les and uh, I see there's uh, Jack, Jack Hills, Sober Carper, Patrick Daniel, Sky doing moderating for us, uh, Corey Lad, Disabled Welshman, Sober Carper, Stargazer, Nickname. Vincent Tomlinson, Ralph Winter, and that's as far as I can see, people. So I, I do apologise. I know I'm a Welsh rebel, and that's Loki. So I know that is uh, great to see you. And I hope Pat comes in, uh, Pat Adams right, and Jay Leveller. So all good. All good. All right, then. Before we come to uh, our two guests for tonight, Danny Paul. Egan. Uh, yeah, and before we come to that stage in the show, I've got to play this for anybody who doesn't know. Uh, I don't think you know this is happening, Paul. What's this? But we'll see if we can get it working for okay, you. I think I know what's happening. I can see that. <laughs> so there you are. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. That's, that's very kind of you, and, and thank you. I, I've had so some great... did, yeah, so if you didn't know it was Paul's birthday today, well, you do now. A little bit about your day then, Paul, your birthday. Well, I've, I've been working on this room. It'll be finished next week, people, so we'll be in a slightly different position, so it's just a bit of a bomb site at the moment. But, so, yeah, not, no exotic birthday, but uh, all good, and, and made better by people in, on social media. So, so many messages and Thank you, everybody. You know, it really is It really is appreciated. And, you know, 61, how frightening is that? But there you are. We can't avoid it, can we? No. So uh, Onwards and upwards. That's onwards and say. upwards. So and, yeah. and tonight, just before you bring them on, Les, you know, we've got two, like you said before, two great guests to talk to. And they, it's like ground zero for me because this is these are people who spent years with me out in these places. So it's really good. Yeah. So if uh, if anybody in the chat wants to interact uh, with us tonight, uh, uh, put some questions in capitals and hopefully we can get them read out. Also, Sky was doing the moderating, as Paul said earlier, will be forwarding those to me. And uh, at this moment in town, Paul, I'll be backstage and I'll bring the uh, two guests on for the, tonight. Ah, right? here's Bob. Uh, Hi, Bob. Hi, Steve. Good evening. Great. Hi guys. Good evening, and great to it's familiar faces. Uh, that, that, it's absolutely great, and I'm I'm sure that there'll be people who know Steve and know Bob. Obviously, Bob's got the radio show Beacon of Light Radio, uh, done lots of research into unexplained phenomena, and Steve is 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 as knowledgeable as most people. But you're the guy that when we go out on cliff tops, you just want to observe. You'll take high powered binoculars. I'm trying to capture it, but you just want to observe. So. There's a, I think there's a place for everybody in in this subject that we're immersed in, and and you you and Bob uh, are as a valid a place as anybody. So it's great to be talking to you tonight. But I'm interested, uh, Steve and Bob. Obviously, when did you kind of cross the bridge from being interested in the subject to being I know there's something to this. I'm reluctant to say believer because it's not a religion. It's you know when you've experienced it, you 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 either know it's real. You don't say I believe. You know it's real. So I'll throw that to either of you. Um, for me, it, there's always been a fascination since I was young as I can remember. Um, I had instances of <clears throat> things moving around which shouldn't have done. I didn't understand what it meant at the time. Um, just I know stuff was in one place one minute and it was somewhere else the next. I don't know where the fascination came from, but it's, it seems to have been always with me. Um, in my early 20s, um, 
still living at home and I had some really interesting experiences uh, my mum and dad's um, as you know Paul I've known you for a lot of years and I always try and find the, the, the logical, the, answer. The, the logical yeah. answer and there were just so many things happening that I, I couldn't I couldn't put into a box I couldn't explain my way anymore um, and I think for me it was living I was probably about 24 or something like that and some things happened at, at my family home, which I just, I, I couldn't explain away. And it was the, that was at the point where I thought, there's got to be something there because I, I can't explain what this is um, or how it happened. So for me, that was kind of the, the real one. And then, and then subsequently investigating the worlds uh, with yourself. Um, people have maybe heard the story before. And I know some of my friends have, but the first time we went, or the first time I went, and the sky would just seem to be um, just lighting up with, with various phenomena. I just, it was like, yeah, this, this is real. This is real. Yeah, it, it were all that. I remember that night, and it were almost like it were it it, it were waiting for us. It, it sounds corny, really, but it, it, I've, I've took I've gone with people before, and that's happened. And I know Bob has. But we'll we'll jump to your childhood experiences in a moment. But let's just throw this back to Bob. And uh, when did when did you really sort of get your head involved in this, Bob? Well, early on in my life, when I was growing up, about five year old, um, I had spirit friends, what we call spirit friends, around me, and I'd be talking to them. And my mama used to say, "Who are you talking to?" I said, "My little friend over there." She couldn't see anybody, and. That got me aware of things as I grew up a little bit more. And about the age of 17, I saw a cigar-shaped object over Halifax. It were over a golf course. There were three of us seeing it. And uh, I said, look at that over there. And we all looked at it, trying to figure out what it was. And at that time, there were a fair few people had seen this cigar-shaped object around West Yorkshire. And... Uh, we looked at it and then it shot off. I didn't think anything about it. And then I got the paper the day after and my name was in it. Man sees a flying object over Halifax. And as things go on in years gone by, I moved over here in 1982. Um, got interested in spiritualism again. And then a friend of mine, when I worked in charity shop, uh, my mate called Gene Fletcher came and he said, you want to talk to this bloke called Paul Sinclair? I've told him about you. He's going to come in and see you. And that's where you came in. We yeah, started yeah. talking. You yeah. said, uh, you fancy coming out at night? And I started to go out and got more interested in it again. Yeah. You know, and same thing happened. We've gone up there, saw the orange lights in the sky, you know, and the rest is history, really. It, 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 it is. involved with it. I hope we're going to get a bit more than that, Bob. I'm only joking. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll have to show, close it down now. No, that was brilliant, Bob. And I want and I want to come back to you with the spiritualism, to be honest, because I think it's as valid a subject as as the UFO phenomena. Because I think ultimately that some of this is linked. But these these things that you touched on earlier, Steve. You know, the 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 childhood encounters and and do you want to expand on them a little bit? Yeah, the first the first incident was um, I was no more than I think I was about five. Moved down from the northeast and lived actually in a pub where I live uh, in the town I live now in Hornsey. Uh, it, the pub was owned by my aunt and uncle, um, and I remember it, being a pub. It had it, it was a big pub, had a lot of old furniture, a lot of stuff, and there was a chest of drawers in my bedroom, and I remember and there was a old school pub ashtray, you know, with a, I don't know, John Smith's or whatever written on it. And I used to have a small wooden toy. Um, it was it was like a stitched together kind of beads, a little guy on a, on a um, scooter. I didn't have loads of toys to play with. I had a few little bits and pieces. And I used to always sit the scooter in line, probably OCD, um, with the, with the writing on the ashtray. And I remember doing this one one day, I was playing in the bedroom, I sat it in the ashtray, I uh, bent down, I was kneeling on the floor, I looked down 
for no more than 10 seconds. And when I looked back up, the little scooter man was was hovering over the edge of the, the chest of drawers. He was, he was balancing on the edge. And I remember thinking, what how how did I just put that in the ashtray? How did he get there? Now I know you might think it was absent mindedness. I was five years old and I can still remember this incident happening. Yeah. I didn't know about a ghost or a poltergeist or what why it just happened. It just confused the life out of me as to how this thing had just one minute been there and then the next minute being somewhere completely different. I never mentioned it. Um but but going forward from that. Um, I don't know if you want to hear this. This there's a bit yeah, of a yeah, ghost. yeah. We're, we're good to hear this, aren't we, Bob? Yeah. As a teenager, I was watching a program alongside my mum, and it was on the old Bali Rectory, which I'm sure most of you will have heard of. Allegedly, the most oh, uh, haunted uh, building in 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 the UK, which is now gone. But it was a really fascinating documentary. I think it was in the 80s. You can still find it on YouTube, actually. Um, I remember it being a daytime watching it with my mum, and my mum sort of said to me, "Do you remember when you saw a ghost?" And I said, "No." And she said, "I said when," and it was when we lived in the pub in the same bedroom. So my mum and I had moved down from the northeast. We shared a bedroom. We had single beds in, in the room. Uh, my mum had woken up for work, and as she'd woken up for work, she saw what she described as a white figure at the end of the bed. And the figure turned and floated off and through the door. So she, she'd pinched herself and so I'm sure I've just seen that. And she went into the kitchen where my aunt, her aunt, my great aunt, was, was already busying herself around. She was an old hotelier, so she was always up early doing something, prepping food for somebody. She was in the kitchen getting ready. And she said to her auntie, you know, um, I've just seen the strangest thing. She said, I've just seen a white figure at the end of the bed and it's floating through the door. So there's always been a bit of a, a belief on my mum's side of the family and female side of the family of, of weird things happening and, and going on. And, you know, I, I use the term psychic, sort of prophetic dreams and things like that. So it wasn't strange to them. They sort of said, oh, that, that's a bit odd. Anyhow, uh, my mum came back in to get me up ready for school 20 minutes later, whatever it was. And I, I toddled into the kitchen and the first thing I said was, um, they said, oh, did you, have, did you sleep well? And I said, oh, well, last night I, I saw a, an angel came to visit me and he was glowing white and he had a nice, kind, smiley face, just like my granddad. Well, they just looked at each other and jaws dropped. Um, because I described exactly what my mum had seen. However, my mum hadn't seen his face because he turned away, but I had. Mm. And it turned out that that was when, when, when my granddad, my mum's dad used to come for holidays um, to the pub, that was his bedroom. Right. So that was kind of one of those wow moments where I, I wish I could remember it, but my mum said yeah. remembered it. But yeah, it was an interesting. It's, it's fascinating. What are your views on that, Bob? Well, to come around you sometimes when you when you don't expect it, and they'll always come round him because sometimes we, when he, when you're young you get lonely, and you sometimes you you think about people and they will appear. They will, like with me, I think about my dad sometimes, and at corner of me I can see him. Sat there with a suit on, with his tie, you know, he's looking. Uh, square, I'm sort of looking square onto him, and I can see him with his tie on and everything, and a smile on his face. And and then I look again, and he's gone. Do you, I've only got to think about him and my mom. It, it happens with my mom as well sometimes when I'm on my own, and I feel, oh, I've got him. Bobby, no mates again. And then you, she, you, <clears throat> go on. sorry, you, no, you, you, sorry, go oh, on. You, you finish, Bob, and then I'll, I'll jump in. And then, and then my mum will have, I can see her up corner of my eye. And then I look again and she's gone, but I know she's around me. So I'm not on my own. I've got people around me. Yeah. So, on, so 
that brought an incident to mind, which which is again lots of things happen in your life where you think it could be something, or it, it could be the wind, or it could be you know there could be a logical explanation. But I was sitting at my mum's um, about a year or so after my dad died. Where my mum lived was in a sort of a, a an apartment with a, an open dining room, kitchen, living room. Um, but where my mum was sitting, there was a wall blanking the door. I could see the door, which was open to the hallway, about four inches, yeah. maybe five inches. And my mum was sitting in the living room. And i am kind of got an eye. I can see the door to my right, but I'm talking to my mum. And I'm mid-conversation, just as I am now, I just went. And I paused and looked at the door. And I thought, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to scare my mum. Yeah. So I saw something and I, and I, and I sort of carried on. And mums being mums are really instinctual. And my mum always had a, a knack for knowing what you were thinking. And mm-hmm. she said, um, why did you just stop then? And I said, no, nothing. She said, you've just seen a grey shadow in the door, haven't you? And I said, how do you know? And she said, because I saw the same thing. And I saw a shadow at the door. Now, whether it was my dad or whether it was a, a shadow person, but there was a shadow in the door. The light was on in the hall. That's how I know it wasn't dark on dark. It was a shadow in the hall. I expected somebody to come through the door. And as I looked over to the door, it it receded away as if, oh, you weren't supposed to see seen that. Me. Yeah, yeah, I've seen you. And 100% I saw that figure in that doorway. But then my mum verified it and said, I've seen it too. And she Did believed it. Bother you? You know, she Steve, believed it was, it, it was Did terrible. it bother you then? After you saw that, sorry, did it did it bother you after you seen that, or, oh, or did you think, oh, it's somewhat there? It's, it's either a shadow of a family. No, it, it didn't. It, it was actually quite um, affirming. I think the fact that I'd seen it, I definitely saw yeah. it. It wasn't a, a corner of your eye peripheral vision. I saw it. In, the, I saw the you see it. Block. I saw the shadow block the light and then disappear from the light, and it was like, "Whoa!" So yeah, it was, it was one of those few, those few times when you think, actually, yeah, there's definitely something there, rather than it did I or didn't I? Hmm. So, that so, so Bob, what, what, and there's no wrong answer for this, but why do why do we see these people, these deceased people, clothed? Why? You said I saw my daddy. You know, this is not a trick question. Full respect no. to you. But why do we see them clothed? And I don't mean we should see them naked. But what, I, 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 it's almost no, like we're having them. we're having the images placed in our mind as we would want to see them. Are we actually seeing them, or is it is it? Uh, I, I, I did a short a few weeks ago called the low intelligence phenomena. Meaning, if we right. concentrate, and I, I, I know you want to answer me, so I'm not going to dwell too long. So. It was after a conversation I had with a friend called Rex, and he was thinking about something, and suddenly he saw it. Now, and is this the phenomena, like trying to interact and and actually perceiving what we're seeing, reading our thoughts, and giving us that? So not necessarily spirit. And I know it crushes spiritualism to say it like that, and that's not what I'm meaning because I've got no, there's no wrong answer. Uh, it's just throwing it out there. Why would we see people clothed? I think sometimes consciousness comes into fact. Um, I know for a fact that if I'm on on a morning, sometimes on a morning, I see more things on the morning when my body's relaxed and my consciousness is open more. I mm-hmm. see, seem to see more people hanging around uh, through uh, from my right side, my left side. Um, I don't know. It's it. My body seems to open up more. Yeah. I don't know, but but that, that, it, yeah, answer, question that, is doesn't, into... that doesn't answer the question of why we no, why we but... see the people in surely for the spirit, and, and 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 I sound like I'm giving spiritualism a bashing. I'm not. I'm just. Cu- I, I can't get my head around it. If they pass to the other side, uh, uh, one day it's going to affect me. I'll be the same. Yeah, but just, why would I be clothed? Why would material things that haven't got an like any kind of physical substance, any soul themselves, be attached to the spirit? That's how I, I see them. I see them like yeah. that. 
Um, some yeah. people might not see them like that, but I see people with clothes on. I'm not saying yeah. I, I, I see shadow people quite often, but quite a few people I see with clothes on. Yeah. It, what's yeah. opened up more through consciousness or not, or other people say, well, I saw somebody, they see shadows more than what else. Yeah. Not a, yeah. Well, well, I call I'm saying a real person, but it's not a real person as such, but it's there. Yeah. It's, it seems to be a solid matter. Well, well, we'll jump to that in a moment. Have you any views on this, Steve, before we move away from this? <clears throat> it's one I've puzzled over a lot, and I don't have an answer other than maybe it's just how you're tuned in or how you're at. <clears throat> maybe the it, it's they are presented as 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 the as they want you to see them, um, mm -hmm. or how your brain picks up that. I'm, I'm a, I've said it before. I'm a believer of that. We tune into things. I think people like Bob can tune into things that other people can't. I've, I've, I've mentioned this. This. I'm not the first one to say it, but I, I do believe that there's a kind of a, a universal internet. You know, all things are there to be seen and heard. It's just yeah, whether yeah. you tune into that. Yeah. And I think sometimes that's yeah. why we have deja vu. That's why we see shadow people. Perhaps that's why we 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 have um paranormal experiences because we've tuned in the our our antenna is pointed in the right direction at the right time uh, so maybe it's just a level of, of of signal you're receiving as to what what you see and what you you perceive i was going to move to shadow people but just just as you've said that then uh part of your question and this is to both of you so do you think if you've had an experience then you're more open to have more because obviously, yeah. what the the belief? I'm keen to shy away from belief earlier, but you know then that there's something there. You know there's some substance and some some reality to what you're experiencing. Do you think that then that the, the openness of knowing allows more of this to interact with us to I, anybody? I think it's, yeah, I, yeah. I think it's a case of tuning in. Um, if if your job is to hunt fossils on the beach, your eyes tune in. You spot fossils yeah. on the beach. If great analogy, yeah. Self. I I don't go anywhere without having an eye on the sky. I can spot an aeroplane flash from, you know, as soon as I walk out the door with the dog, I'll, if there's something in the sky, I will see it because that's how I've tuned, tuned in. myself in. And I think it's the same thing. I think if you tune yourself in, you'll see, you, you'll be more susceptible to seeing things. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm the same as well. Um, I'm so relaxed sometimes. That's when... I see more. If yeah. I relax myself, tune in more, I see more. But I'm, yeah. I'm saying I, I'm always looking and, and trying to figure out why you see things like this. Mm. You've got to be tuned in to see them. It's the same yeah. as a parent, if you're doing a paranormal event, some people can see things through cameras and other people can't. They might mm. get the camera out and go, well, I can't see no. And, and somebody else could go like that and say, well, I've seen it. It's over there. But but is is that a, a more what's what's proof of the existence of something to somebody might be a dust orb to another person. Some people might be that sold on. Look at the look at my, these pictures. I've caught alien visitation or I've caught spirits <laughs> and, and, and like to yes. Paul or to Steve or to Bob, not necessarily anybody in particular, but it might be dust. So, you know, one person's yes. proof of spirit or alien could be a dust or to somebody be. else. And and, and yes. just throwing it out to chat here, people, uh, questions in block capitals. And let's jump to, unless anybody wants to just elaborate on that, let's jump to Bob's shadow people. Tell us about well, them, Bob, in that room. Yeah. Well, it's this house. Definitely this house, what Paul owns now. Things have happened since he moved in, but, but since I've moved into this top flat, the old lady lived here before, um, I've seen shadow people coming out of the wall, uh, what I said, the south-facing wall, I'm, what, 30 foot up, come through that wall, walk in front of the TV and into the wall. Yeah. And I saw it with my own eyes. I'm going to say human eye then, 
<laughs> but you and I. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I, need to, I need to stress yeah. that, that I've never wrote about this, and Bob's not saying this because I've said, can you, can you do this because we're on a live stream? But you, you've told me about seeing these things uh, for, for years, and uh, I have, I've yeah. got to admit that I've seen similar myself. So I'm interested. And, so, and, and yeah. then you're thinking, you know, I'm 30 foot up. So to come through that open, that wall, the other side is a quite a fair drop. Walk in front of the TV and into the into the, the, the wall of what's in front of me. And I think, what was that? Quite tall as well. Not small. Covered the TV in quite high up. Could you see through and then it? And they've gone Bob? into the side row. No, I couldn't Could you see just black. Yeah. Just jet black. And then well, well, I'm, gone into the I'm, 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 I'm keen. Well, not keen. I would never say a name, but I know that, that there's somebody who used to live very close, uh, who I knew for over 30 years, who claimed, as they'd grown up there from a small child, that they'd got a demon in the house that used to, it, it plagued uh, this person all their life and uh, wake up and it would be there. And it's literally, that just sounds frightening, really. It's literally feet away from this property. You know, it's it's a frightening thing. And <laughs> oh, I, but I've, never, I've yeah. never seen or experienced anything like that, Bob, to be honest with you. Not demon-like, but, you know. You, yeah, yeah but well, you... I haven't seen demon, but I've, I've seen black shadows quite frequently. Uh, what in this crazy room. thing to talk about, I just think Steve's got something to add here. Go on. Well, it, it was more your experiences, Paul. Since all the years I've known you, I can probably count a dozen things that you've told me you've experienced in your or Mary has experienced mm -hmm. in your house from the smoke swirling and the, the, the silver light and the drops of light were incredible. The you... light, the, the, um, I mean, I remember photographs from years ago when you had trail cam set up in the hall because you yeah. were having, and around the uh, was it in one of the kids bedrooms there was some white lights yeah. around one of the beds some light it, it, and, and the neighbors over the road literally one of them still living there oh, seeing yeah, things right. and knocking on our door and telling us the seeing things through in the in the property you know uh, i think we're going back definitely to 1990s 95 96 mm -hmm. and peter who lived over the road uh, he, he he damaged his lungs working in foundries, so he didn't sleep in a bed. He, he could only sleep sat up. It made it uncomfortable to sleep laid down. So he'd sit in the front room, comfortable chair, and he, he sat, getting as much sleep as he can, but looking out onto the world through these net curtains. He says, in the top bedroom, incidentally, I'm sorry, Bob, but it's your bedroom with the arched window. He said, he said I, see, right. I, see, I see two red lights as big as gold, uh, tennis balls and a white light. And they're moving about in the early hours of the morning. And he said, and it used to be Sarah's bedroom, our eldest daughter. And he said, I thought one of the girls had probably got some kind of light that they'd bought that moved things on the ceiling. So it was unusual. He said, and I'm watching it because he didn't have loads of stories like this. He came over twice in all the years he lived here. He's, and he's knocking on his door next morning, check everything were okay. He said, and then suddenly the white light dropped and I could see it moving about on the next floor. So it had gone through the floor. Then it went down again. He said, and at that, I went upstairs and woke my wife up. And we stood in their middle bedroom watching these lights moving about the house. Uh, you know, and then we've got the other lady who still lives there now, and she's seen some strange things on on on, land, on landings while she's oh, yes. lived there. Well, you know Marie. her. You've spoke to her. Marie. And, and, and I know this is about you guys, but it's interesting to say that door behind you, Bob, that's where in, in 1993, when I moved in here, I was laid on a mattress with Sarah looking out onto landing. And it, whatever happened in my childhood for me stopped at about 14. And I moved back up here. I moved here in 1993 at the age of, I don't know, I think I was 33, maybe. I'm not sure. And it started instantly. They were there within... Within days of we didn't move in, we were doing a place up because it was just absolutely derelict. And me and Sarah used to come up, and it started straight away. It's almost like your map, your life's mapped out. But this is about you guys. Sorry, uh, any views on any of that? Um, I don't know. I I just 
I've had similar experiences in different houses, so I'm not sure whether it's the place or the people who are mm -hmm. actually the ones who bring it, attract it, or it's with them or it's in, in, in a place. But I know when you moved in, did you not have a priest unannounced, just knock on the door and want to bless your house? Yeah, Reverend Willis came. Yeah, Willis. Uh, uh, <coughs> Willis. So, yeah. so he, he wrote the ghost books, didn't he? He, he what? Sorry, he wrote some ghost books, didn't he? Some local ghost books. Yeah, yeah and they did they did uh, the TV programs about him. He was the exorcist. That's uh, right. That's uh, right. For the church, obviously, and uh, and he, he performed not just hundreds but thousands of exorcisms in his career working for the church. And he, he appeared at this property where Bob sat now, uh, unannounced. We'd only been in house a week, two weeks, knocked on the door and said he'd like to bless the house. And, yeah, he, he'd already been. He'd already been to property. And then we I found out that... There. Yeah, yeah. We, well, we found lots of stuff when we started stripping wallpaper back that, that there'd been some unsavoury things happening, should we say. But uh, jumping from that then, uh, we've, we've, we've kind of done the the, sh the shadow beings and we'll jump away from this property if i ever come to sell it you know i'll never sell it will i <laughs> I'm, just, I'm joking yeah. but, uh, well i might do because you know that, it, it kind of interests people doesn't it uh but we'll go to wald me and steve ashbridge we spent i don't know you know years we were up there 2005 what it till na nine we spent a lot of time up there yeah and uh one of most we've talked about this on a live stream before, but I, I can't get my head around what we saw up there. So let's forget about these big orange lights, mm. and I, let's talk about what we call the hedge lights because I'd like to go back and revisit and see if this is still happening. And it was at a place called Butter, the turn off to Buttercram, just past Octon. Well, am I right, Steve? Butterwick. 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 Apologies. So walk us into that, Steve. Tell us about it. Um. My my record, well, the first time you mentioned headlights was that hedge lights was actually before we'd even seen one, and I think you were up there with perhaps Sarah or Laura. It was Jessica. She just Jessica. finished uni. Yeah, and you got now. Hi, Jess. Looking down the road towards Butterwick, and you mentioned that you'd seen a, a single sort of lantern type light come up the road, and you were expecting it almost looked like a horse and carriage type scenario but then the, the light had sort of gone veered off to its right and into the, the bushes and disappeared so you were telling me this story and it wasn't long after that that we saw well the first time i saw something i said to you there's, there's, a, there's a bike i saw a a, a, a ready orange light and a, and a white light coming up the road which, well, I'm sorry for butting in, but it was impossible, really. But that—that's the analogy. Yeah. That's what we were thinking because we could see the back light of the bike and the and the front. And the front light, yeah. Oh, and yeah. It, we, we, it was the opposite side of the hedge to where we were stood, so we've seen it through a hedge. But it was winter time, so it was a it was a a, a hawthorn hedgerow, so it was fairly sparse at that time of year. So you could see two lights sort of coming along the hedgerow. Um, and I said to you, Who, who's mad enough to be on a bike? It, it, that must be a bike, but who's mad enough to be? I mean, it was it was October time, I believe. It was freezing, freezing cold, and the wind was and, and, really and just howling. Before you go on, Steve, describe the location, because it's not a busy road. It's it's a desolate. It's, it's the road from Octon to Sledmere. Um, and at that time of night, virtually no, you know, an odd car here and there, but virtually no traffic. So why a put and it's a long old road to be on a push bike. It's not something that you've just pedaled ten minutes to. You've, you've excuse me, you've done a lot of pedaling to get there at that time of night in in really strong, heavy winds. Not not gale force, but really heavy winds. Mm. So I remember thinking, what on earth is this push bike doing on this road at this time of night? But then the two lights seem to converge. They seem to come together like that. Yeah. Um, and I'm thinking in my head, in physics terms, if if the bike had turned, would I see the lights come together? But why could I still see the red and white light in the same space sort of come together? And then the next thing, they were gone. And I, I, I just want to add as well, I don't think it was red-red, it was more of an orangey-red. Okay. Um, 
and and so I said to Paul, if that was a bike, he's come off because it's it's gone, it's just vanished. There was no side road, there was it was just gone. So we jumped in the car, literally, because the car was next to us and we set off down the road really, you know, five miles an hour. Just nothing, mm. nothing and nobody there. Um so that was a bit of a conundrum, that one, where they disappeared. Yeah, we went so, up and down a few times, didn't we? Yep. Yeah, we went down, looked around. There isn't a ditch there, so they hadn't gone in a ditch. It's just a, a grass verge. So it was quite easy to see. You would have seen somebody falling off a push bike. So mm. that was an odd one. And then I know you're going to ask me about the tree, which I think we mentioned last time, but anybody who didn't hear it, was it was, it was the weirdest thing. We were in the same... Same location, same hedge line, actually. And along the hedge line, it's still there to this day. There was, there was, a, there was just one or two tall trees in amongst the, um, the, the, the hawthorn bush. And we're looking, and, and, I, and I can't remember which of us spotted it first, actually. But we looked over, and there seemed to be a light in the tree. And it, it, it was almost, it was a dull or, dull yellow light. It wasn't a full beam. It was just a see light. through it, couldn't you? It was yeah. translucent, yeah, it was wasn't like it? Up, if light can be opaque, it was almost like an opaque light. And it was just, it was just swelling through the tree, through the treetop. And we looked at each other and said, what the hell is that? So I, we looked for a source of light, for a torch beam or, you know, there was just mm. no source for the, for the light to be there. And it was, it, I was, it was almost like, butterflies sort of mm. in, the, in the tree just just wafting around so i set off across the the field to see if i could <laughs> you know shed some light on it so to speak pardon the pun but by the time i got there it, it was it gone, gone. but it, it, it lasted a, a good while it wasn't a fleeting glimpse it was it was flicking around in the tree for ages it wasn't i mean i don't think we have fireflies or anything like that but it wasn't that kind of luminosity it was a different, like Paul said, it was almost an opaque yellow. It, it, it was just really dull, but it was there and it was circular. And it's, I, 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 we, we at that time we were more interested in these vivid orange lights that we're seeing over at sea as well. But I yeah. think these edge lights, as we've called them, were just as important. I'm fascinated. I'd like to start revisiting that area, to be honest, because I'm, sh I'm sure that phenomena, whatever it was, would probably still be there. Uh, yeah, I do. I, I do come back that way sometimes. I do find myself on that road at night from time to time, and I always, uh, time permitting, pull in at the same layby. Um, well, it's a farm field entrance, and and I have mm. 10, 10, 15 minutes there. But I've not, I've not had the same success. But it's always worth, as I've always said, and you've always said, you've got to be in it to win it. If you're not yep. there, you're not looking. Exactly. Well, so. <coughs> And I don't think it's worth stressing because people, I can't remember name at road. You, I know Steve might remember name at road, it, but whatever the road is, there's no street lights, there's no properties, there's a farm midpoint. Uh, and then you've got the village of Cottom, if you can even call it a village. There's, there's, there's just okay. no houses there, it's tiny. And that next stop is over Hill, you've got Cowlam and, and Sledmere. So, yeah. so there's nothing, absolutely nothing to, to create that effect. And I'm not leaving you out here, Bob, but we'll just dwell on this for a moment. No, no, I know, you, I know you've been, because I went up there with you a few you've times You've been up well. there, yeah. Well, we'll, have to, we'll yeah. have to go up there again and spend a bit of time up there. But all the time me and Steve were doing this, Bob, we'd, we'd got a, a, a farmer, an old farmer up at Staxton who'd got cameras trained on from the back of his house, at the side of his house, looking over towards Sledmere on the walls and it were him that alerted us to these lights ah. and it was quite amusing really because we'd be there and he'd be ringing the, me up saying can you see them can you see them and we, we, it were like dual dual sightings because he's 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 looking at the same things as us not the hedge lights they weren't vivid enough to see from up there but he were watching what we were watching you remember that steve yeah absolutely it, it was quite we said it before it's quite a frequent occurrence it wasn't it wasn't once in a blue moon when, when we first went there we, we were disappointed if we didn't see something because it yeah. was it was, it was so, so active. sometimes yeah. it was more prolific than others but there was usually something of interest going off up there until 
such a time when we decided to call it quits and go towards Bempton because it had really pretty much dried up. It was petering out, weren't it? And things were happening at Bempton. And that's where, well, both of you, Bob comes in as well. What did, what did you think, Bob, when you, you know, I, I, you heard me talking about these lights and you'd not seen them. Oh, my God, yeah. You saw them? What did you God, think? You know, you said to me, um, me and Steve have been up there and we've, we've seen these one, two, three, four, five, six lights of beer. I thought, oh, my God. And then when I, I saw them, it was just amazing. How they just came along. I know one night, I think they, they showed us 13 times in one night. Yeah. But you, you, you think, what are they? Are they solid? Are they solid matter? Can you mm -hmm. see through them? We, I, I know we didn't have the technology then. We didn't have uh, infrared cameras. No. To see if we could see more. You had a good camera. I didn't have a camera then. I've got no, a camera now. Bob's, um, Bob's invested in a psionics, which is good. So, uh, you know, is uh, hopefully we'll be able to catch a little bit it more. It's just of amazing to see him. I've heard yeah. so much about these lights. You know, it's it's just amazing where, you know, you hear people say, no, they're not proper lights. They aren't. The so and so lights and this and that. But I know what I've seen. You know, I can tell you what, what I've seen. What would that, you that, say then? Throw this to both of you. What would you say? Uh, oh, sorry, Steve, you're gone. You're going to add to that. I just, I was just going to say, Bob, literally, the first time I went to the walls, that's exactly what happened with me. It was like, well, these are real. It, it happened the first time. And at Benton, the first time I went to Benton, Bob, the same lights appeared. Um, the second time they appeared five or six times. Unfortunately, most most of the time they were in cloud or behind cloud, so they couldn't, they weren't clear, but you could see it happening in the cloud. And then the cloud cleared and boom, there they were again. So it's, it's almost like that first time you go, it's like, whoop, we're here. Just, just to... There, there is something yeah. to that, you know. You, I think on, they've Bob. got some te technology because there's many a time when we brought somebody up there who's never been before, the lights show for them. We could be, we might go for another six months and see nothing. It's and because that first came up, they appeared and... and and he got them on well, camera as well. Well, Chris Turner, uh, oh, Chris is great, great researcher, great documentary filmmaker, but he'll hold his hands up and say, you know, I've, I've not seen anything. Came to Bempton <laughs> and he saw them. They present, these things presented, and, and not just to, to Chris, but well, to Jerry he didn't Denning. Get a photo, did he? He, no, it he was too cold. Photo, uh, it, it, they couldn't <laughs> operate cameras. That's how cold it is up there. You, you, you literally, your hands are dropping oh, off. And Steve yeah. knows this, and you know this. Lee Haywood, Lee wanted to show me, explain to me, and give me an explanation what these things were. And I've hundred percent respect for Lee because he does whatever Lee does. He does it in a in a respectful manner. And if somebody wants to prove to me that these are something man-made or some earth phenomena some natural occurring phenomena i'm all ears because we, that's what we're supposed to be doing we're looking for answers to this yeah and uh, lee came away thinking i haven't a clue what i've just seen because what we saw in the field in the field with us was huge lee's exact words the influence the light were giving off were as big as a volkswagen beetle circular and as i'm pulling camera around to get it on it it's just and it's gone just dissipated and gone so that's strange Paul, what, yeah, that you know what Lee saw, um, it made him. He had some reactions from it, didn't he? Oh God, it, it absolutely changed his mind about what what these things were. He doesn't obviously know what they were, and what's interesting, I don't know if Lee listens to these, but I'm, I'm not saying out out of turn. I, I found out later. Because uh, Lee, Lee came up there with us well, whilst we were making Wolflands. Uh, he was kind enough to come up and do a bit more filming. And he said, mm. I've seen him again, you know. I said, what do you mean? He said, because he doesn't drive. In fact, he's just passed his test, so congratulations, mate. And his wife drove him up there and said, right, I'll pick you up in two or three hours. And he went up on his own. And he said he saw him again. But he, he waited until we'd actually met up. And I said, well, why didn't you say? He said, because... I, I've no, I've nobody to 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 corroborate, corroborate with. Nobody to say, yeah, we did see them. Like when I saw them with him, he said. So I don't really think it counts. I said it's just as valid. I said your word is you're as good as your word, and we can't assume everybody's 
making it up. And and yeah, he said he saw him again. Uh, and, or, or so it. We did see a few that night, but the thing in the field were huge. But he went up again and saw it again in the field. He claims, and I, I I do believe him. So that field, jumping to that field. Uh, let's just dwell on the on the fear aspect now. Uh, and this, I think Steve knows where I'm going with this, and, and so Bob certainly will. Uh, I went up there with you, Steve. I don't know what would we say four years ago, maybe. And we were up there very late. It'd be half past 11, 12 o'clock at night. We'd gone to the north side of Dane's Dyke and we were walking back. It were bristling. It were really cold, icy. And suddenly I felt fear. And I, I don't say that, do I? I don't mean I'm fearless, people, because I'm not, but I just, I, I was scared. And I said to Steve, I said, you know, I said, Steve, I said, we've got to go. I said, I really, really feel like I'm frightened. This, this, it, you didn't feel it. And I said, well, you said, what's the matter? I said, I feel like I'm being watched. I said, I, I, it, it's strange. I said, I don't like this. Any idea? Can you remember that night? I, uh, vividly, yeah, because uh, it, it's one of them where we've, we've said, we've, we, we've documented before that uh, Benton, it, it's it's a lovely place, beautiful part of the world, and it's it's serene and it's gorgeous and the sea and the birds and the wildlife and the fields. And the sun goes down, the sun sets, great. But then sometimes the atmosphere just changes on the sixpence and it closes in and all of a sudden it feels unnatural and it feels spooky. Now, you could say that about any dark place when the sun goes down, but it genuinely yeah. does have a... Not all the time, not every night, not every time you go, but just sometimes the atmosphere seems to switch. And all of a sudden you do feel a little bit unnerved and on your own. And shit, what, excuse my French, what if something no, did right. happen? You, you know, you, we're out here in the back end of nowhere. Nobody would find you. Nobody would know you were there. Um, but usually when the atmosphere switches like that, you, we both pick up on it, or, or three or four of us, whoever's there, you, you all kind of sense it together. Mm -hmm. And you go, you feel that, and you, and you feel, yeah, well, I thought that was just me, but no, this, the shudder comes down your spine, and all of a sudden you feel a bit alone. Um, but that night, I felt nothing. We'd, we'd talked about, I think we'd gone past Wolfgate and stuff like that, and we talked about sightings of, of wolves and, and the sheep um, mutilations and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And we were stood fairly near to that field where the sheep had been mutilated for a couple of years yeah but i felt nothing and on the way back Paul was genuinely genuinely terrified oh um, right I have, oh, yeah, I, have, I have no fear in no fear that's what I'm to say. Uh, i don't mind saying i was frightened and and i don't know where it came from because i spent time up there on my own uh, and i had done prior to that happening but i think you've had a well i know you've had an experience like that bob and you've spent you when Bob comes up onto the cliff tops with us people, uh, there'll be odd times he'll just wander off into the darkness with his tri-field meter or EMF meter, and he'll just do his own thing and and film it or shout me over if anything's occurring, and I'll just stay with cameras. We don't have to worry about cameras, by the way, because there's nobody up there. It's devoid of anybody. Exactly. But tell us about that night, Bob. I did. I, I just said to Paul, right, I'm off. Um, I said, I'm going up there. He said, well, I'm going to stop on platform. And I walked up to the top, went a bit further, and I'm looking around. I thought, well, I, think, I just felt scared. I just felt as though somebody were watching me. And I've never, ever been scared up there in my life. Never. But it got frightening. And I, I've got my torch and I went like this to Paul. Get over here. I need you. Um, but I was really frightened. I felt as though something was watching me out, out there in field. Mm, and I got to talk and I, I tried to look round. There's nothing there. <coughs> and, I, and it just came over me. And I've mm. never had that feeling before up there. Never, ever. No. I know Andy gets it now and then. He can be up five minutes or 15 minutes. He wants to go home. Oh, oh Andy Ramsden, yeah. <laughs> when you yeah, came man. over and said to me, "Are you all right?" I went, "Not real." I said, "I'm bloody frightened. Don't know yeah. why." And it's just, it's a strange thing to say, and 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 I've no shame in saying it. That is exactly as it made me feel, you know. And and bearing in mind, back in 2017 to 2019, I were on them fields at 4 a.m. 
I know you was. The, the, the back of those in the darkness, trying to decipher what were killing these 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 this, this livestock, and uh, maybe foolhardy. I'm not saying it, it weren't, but I, I didn't feel fear like I did when I was uh, on that cliff top with Steve that night, and I know it affected you. So mm. let's just stay on this this hill then. Tell us about that photograph that you took, Bob. I don't know if Steve's seen it. Have you? The the the, the, the strange uh, shape on the hill. Yes. Yeah, I've seen yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I was on the platform, uh, just taking photos. Gemma was there, quite a few people were there. Mick Ganley was there as well. And I, I just saw this bird flapping about up there, and I said, what's that? And Paul said, Kestrel. it's a uh, kestrel. Kestrel. Mm. It, yeah, so when I take a photo of it, at the side of it, I just saw this black object on the side of the field. So I thought, I'll take a photo of that. And then when I looked again, it had gone. So I said to Paul, come here, have a look at this. He went, well, why didn't you tell me? I said, just didn't get time. I said, look at that. He went, bloody hell, it's gone. What is it? I said, well, I've no idea. He said, right, Gemma, I'm off. You went straight over, walked it upside of where cliffs are, onto where it, it was. I said, stop there. He had a look and he went, I can't see not round here at all. There's nothing there, and it's it's a it's a solid object that's there on on that on the on the brow of that hill, and it genuinely you know, looks something like something watching. crouched down. It, it's a strange looking picture. In fact, I know Les, Les probably sat listening to this, and we haven't got the picture to show. But it's it's a shame because we could have actually put that up. And uh, yeah, we could have, yeah, have you any object? Have you any objection? Bob, if we if we showed the picture, no, it, it, no, not, you go ahead. Yeah, okay. I know you we go haven't ahead. got the picture, but we we will we will get that because it's it's easy to talk about these things and and kind of make something of it, and then so well they never showed us pictures. You know, you know what I mean? So I, yeah, I thought it, it, about that then. I could have probably sent it, probably. Yeah, yeah. Not to worry, not to worry. So we'll, we'll, we'll jump know, away. Why, why did I'm going to say, but what makes me think, why did it open up so I could take a photo of it? Well, you just got the one picture. Well, it almost looks like someone crouched looking at us, to be honest with you. I don't, maybe, yeah, maybe, but... who can say that it knew you were taking, whatever it was, knew you were taking a picture. Do you think a lot of these things, throw this at both of you, do you think a lot of these things that people see and experience uh, are random or do you think it's all by design? Because you were saying, why did it let me take a photograph? You were taking a photograph of a bird. Not I know I was. Did somebody whistle then? Did no. somebody whistle Oh, then? sorry, that's my dog. Why? Oh. That's, that's my dog. <laughs> why did she not whistle? She sat next to me wanting me to... <laughs> I just, I just, I just talked about a bird, and then I had a whistle, and I thought, "Oh gosh, yeah, <laughs> hey, that's good." It's my dog whining. So, what so you were saying we'll, about do, do we? Does it take by design then, or, or I, don't, I don't know. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not convinced it is. I, I, I think it might be eventually. When again, going back to the tuning in thing, I think initially, when you when you see all the people across the world who've had experiences that come from all different backgrounds and and yeah. ages and 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 uh, a lot of people are just complete non-believers whether they see these things or not but they still see them mm -hmm. so I, i'm not convinced it is by design i mm -hmm. think i think they're out there if you happen to be lucky enough to be in the right place to see them you are and if you're not you're not i mean look how many people look how people like us and Paul particularly, who was out there week in, week out. And, yeah, you might see, we, we have seen lots of things. That's over a very long space of time. But some random guy, girl, doesn't believe in UFOs and there's something follows them home above the car or something in the middle of the yeah, road yeah. in front of them. Good point. They, didn't, they weren't particularly looking for that. It, it just manifested there. So I do think there's, um, I think there's a real element of, of luck if you perceive it as lucky, I would. Um, yeah. Whether you're going to see these things or not, I think it's a bit of a lottery. I think you make a good point. I mean, I do spend an awful lot of time up there, and I like this week. I well, Bob Bob comes up with us, but I've been up with Peter, uh, who sits in chat but doesn't join in chat. You should do, Pete and and Linny, and uh, 
we've gone for weeks and weeks and weeks. There's been nothing, absolutely nothing. And that's the nature of it. You've done it, Steve. Bob's done it. And I think that's not a lesson to everybody who's interested in, in the phenomena, whatever it may be, or whatever particular genre of unexplained phenomena you're looking into. You've got to invest months, even years, before you get a result. We spent ages with EMF meters and getting nothing. Suddenly, they've started to play. Suddenly, things are happening with them. Yeah. I don't know why. That same, it's the same equipment, but it's starting to interact. Maybe I don't know. There's a time and a place. I don't know. Jumping to Cotton Electronic. Uh, hold on a minute. We'll just check whether Les has got any questions before we jump to Cotton. I don't. Hi, Les. You all right? Les, you want your mic on, mate? Yeah, I heard my name mentioned there. Yeah. Uh, right, I've got a question from... I'll put this on the screen. Al Durham. Bob, was the CIR over Halifax travelling from the direction of Hebden Bridge or Todmorden? Hebden Bridge, I would say. I, I do know, know that. I, I, don't, I, I do know that area. Yeah. Okay. And, and just before we leave that, Al Durham, great supporter of, of this stream and, and everything that we do. And Al, I did ring you a few weeks ago, mate. I'll, I'll have a talk to you in the next few days. Thanks a lot, mate. Okay, I've got a question from Gavin Still Crazy. Hi, Bob. Have you had any sleep paralysis experiences? Yes, I have, yeah. Quite a few times. You know, uh, can't move your body. Your mind's alert, and you can't move. It. And terrible, terrible feeling. Uh, and then all of a sudden, it just goes off completely. But I've had it a few times. It at first, when it used to happen to me, I used to think, "Oh God, what the hell's happening here?" I couldn't figure out what, what was happening. Uh, but when you speak to other people, um, they say, you know, you might have been I come for you, you might have had an encounter. You just don't know. You, I, I know in spiritualism, um, the experiences quite often in spiritualism, and I've had them before. But is it more of that, or is it because the sleep paralysis do you, do you encounter? Out of body experience as well, because sometimes you you feel as though when you get back into it, you jerk your body as though you come it again. I've had it a is, few is times. It... That what do you think, Steve? I've had two instances that I can recall um, where the, I had the, the the quintessential big black demon sitting on me, um, just looming over me and 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 i couldn't move uh whether it's from fear or paralysis i don't know but i couldn't move and and i remember the second mm. time it happened i actually I, I think my brain forced me into action and i lashed out at this thing um because it was on top of me and i was like no get off me and i lashed out at it um uh, and and those two instances stick with me because they were extremely extremely scary they were terrifying but when you look through the history books of demons sucky bus sinky bus sitting on people whether it was one of those or a demon I, I i don't know but something affected me really badly twice in my life it, it, it's fascinating isn't it the incubus succubus it, it's fascinating that people experience the same thing it's not evolved, has it? It's almost as though even if even if it's a combination of some kind of chemical imbalance that's allowing you to slip into this state, this this altered state, what we will call what people mm. call sleep paralysis, is that altered state allowing the phenomena to that portion, that type of phenomena to come and interact? Because it's strange that people report experiencing the same type of entity over not just decades, over hundreds and hundreds of years. And that, that's fascinating. It's not changed. It's not changed into a grey alien, has it? It's not changed into a, a white lady. It's it's something truly horrifying and no. demonic that's taking place. It, it, yeah, it, in my instance, it really was. I mean, 
I've got to say, one time it was a, it was sort of blurred. I could, there was no features, but you could. It, it, it was just terrifying. You just, you just oozed, you know, evilness. And I know that sounds really corny, but it did. But well, the if that's, first yeah. time it happened, it, it was warts and all. Um, and I, 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 Les has probably seen it, but I see Alison saying she's had experience like that, but not for a long time. Well, let's hope it uh, doesn't happen again, Alison. <laughs> for a long time yeah yeah and uh you know paul i i used to ask her to... hold on go on no no you, you just broke up bob come oh um i used to astro travel as as they call it i used to feel so I'm, I'm going down into a long tunnel one way and going down and down and down and down as though for ages and ages and ages when I came out at over end, I used to wake up. I, I, I've, I've never experienced that. It's Maybe people in chat haven't. Yeah. I've, I've kind of astro travelled with whiskeys and coke it's odd times. times. But... <laughs> 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 but, uh, no, no, I, no, sorry. But just, I like it. But uh, yeah. Yeah, and the gin. Gin. So, let's, gin do we have more questions? I got. Yeah. I got a. It's just. Oh yes. Sorry, Les. Les I'm, I'm, I ask you, and then I'm cutting across. Uh, Patrick Daniel. He, he gave me a bottle of gin last week. Thank you, Patrick. Palmer's gin. That's absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Okay, right. Well, talking about celebrations and I know because it's in chat and gin. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. That's my daughter. Evening, everyone. Uh, evening, everyone. Let's raise a glass and cheers to oh, my Jess dad, Paul Sinclair. Oh, Happy yeah. birthday. Ah, thank you, Jess. Thank you. And thanks for Happy coming today. Happy birthday. Yeah, she bought me this shirt. Yeah, all wow. good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. Right, sure. I've got a Her husband did as well. Sorry, uh, Joel. Yeah, come on. Joel Burgess, yeah. Question, uh, Re, the white lady. And you probably have to fill people in on a stream of uh, where this uh, white lady is. But does Bob and Steve think that, think she may be, may be existing? I think it means. Right. Well, we'll hand it to Bob and Steve in a moment then. So what, what Joel's referring to is Dane's Dyke and the, the, the ghost, the apparition of the white lady at Dane's Dyke, which is a story that goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. <coughs> And I know Joel's been spending quite a bit of time up at Dane's Dyke with his wife, and they've been doing a bit of, uh, well, quite a lot of investigating. So full credit to you, mate. And uh, But the stories I've heard of the white lady, when people have talked to me and said, I think I've seen the ghost of the white lady, they've seen a sphere of light, a sphere of white light. And they're, they're not imagining it, they're not interpreting it to be some white, but that's what they're calling it. Just like at Bempton. No. And the fisherman said, we see the ghost of the big railings. And when you ask them what they've seen, they've seen a, a sphere of light. So wow. you know, and, but, but it's a it's a common theme that's coming through. So so the white lady does that, Bob and Steve. Like, what does Bob, oh, I think you mean what does Bob and Steve think? It's folklore, well, isn't it? It's folklore, Bob. But what do you think? What do you think it is? Is it a spirit? Is it is it some light form phenomena? And to both of you, so whatever you want to start. Um, without I'll seeing it, yourself. Yourself. yeah, w without seeing it, it's hard to say. Um, I haven't seen it, I've seen it, I'm only going on what people have told me. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, the yeah. fact that it's folklore and it's gone on for maybe like say hundreds of years, there, there's something there that, yeah, that's probably a given. Um, oh, yeah, definitely, if you've been around that long. I would think I would be more inclined to say it was some form of spirit or spirit energy rather than yeah. a, an energy source because an energy source would probably disappear or go somewhere else. Or there's 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 something there, and yeah. it almost seems deviant, uh, devious, whatever it is. You know, I, I was talking to somebody a few months ago, and we ended up walking towards Beacon Hill, which is, uh, I don't know, half a mile from where people claim to see the white lady. And this guy was telling us, I think I talked about it on live stream, about walking up there on a sunny day with his wife 
it would have been in the 60s. Uh, that, not that that matters, but I'm just, just setting the scene, giving you an idea. They're not youngsters. They stop to talk to another couple and she spins around and falls on floor. And it goes to help her and she falls on floor again. And she said something were pushing her down. Uh, 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 very close to where this this apparition, this thing's seen. There's another way, woman up there with her children and her husband having a walk in that woodland. So if anybody familiar with Danes Dyke, go to the bottom, to the sea, take a left and go up them steps, and it's in that woodland at the top. I'm not saying that's where everything happens, but that's where this... She wanted a wee and went and found mean? a discreet place. And she were crying and screaming and... She said something were holding her down. Something were holding her shoulders down. So so there's lots of there's lots of strangeness up there. It's almost it's almost devious, whatever it is that's uh, that's interacting and playing tricks with You're people. Saying that, but Paul, I don't know. Well, uh, it is strange because I I had a walk in lockdown. We we came to Dane's Dyke for a walk. And on the way back, you can walk on tops and and uh Walk on sea front a bit round the corner, and as we got around, the, I saw this this lady. She had a fur coat on. She looked as you though she looked at going back in the fifties or sixties, and she had uh, a dog with her, and she was smoking, and uh, it looked like want a tip cigarette, and it like had a bit of an odor on it, and she's smoking away, and I, I said to Kate. Strange that woman. Why would she do that? And then we stopped and had a sheet in front of us. And we weren't far behind. When we were around that corner, she disappeared, gone, vanished. Strange, and we it? looked, I mean... we looked, and on way down, we looked at right, left was cliff, right, we looked for ages, for, for another 20 minutes, never saw her at all. With Strange, a fair coat on. Okay, uh, I've got a question. Has no... Yeah, I've got a question from Gavin. Still crazy. Yeah, Have you ever man. seen a shadow being? You talked about that earlier, Bob. Uh, but known as the known as the Hat Man. The Hat Man. Yes, I have. Yeah, I've similar sort of thing. Uh, to when I was dog sitting. And uh, sat watching telly, and this this black patio doors, and uh, quite open, quite a big open space. And I'm thought dog dog with brown a little bit, and I looked and I thought, who's that looking in window with their hat on? And I thought it can't be. Anyway, watch. Went towards the door, opened the door, let the dog out first. And it was it was barking like bloody hell. It always does anyway. But but the fencing at both sides about six foot tall. You'd have to be quite good to get over. It. Anyway, uh, dog went out. I laid it back in. In the morning, I went look for footprints. No footprints at all. And I thought, what was it? And I told Paul about it. Strange enough. You, you did uh, well. Uh, uh, no, that it, was the it week before it, everything happened. It was a build up to a combination of events that, and uh, you know, we, we, we can we can get to that in a. Yeah, we, we're actually going to film. We're going to film one like this myself and Liz in a few weeks' time, but we'll not go into detail. But we can get to that, you know, in, in a while. You know, we we can actually do that do that story. Have you any more yeah. questions, Les? We will get to that, Bob. Yeah, and uh, I got to thank Sky for sending the questions through. Uh, let's have a look. Ah, I'll I'll uh, I'll put <coughs> one on the screen from Danny Egan, eighteen twenty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> I won't read that one. Out, probably, uh... <laughs> I like well, thanks, that. Thanks, Danny. I like that one. You've just yeah, you've just, you've just lowered the tone that. of our live stream, Danny. But no, it's yeah. all good. There's a, there's a reason for this. So go on, Bob. You've got to elaborate on it now. And then I want to jump to Steve if we've got no more questions. Go on, Bob. Tell him yeah, about the stone. I've met some scones. Yeah, i met some scones. They're like, all going to think we're nuts and, now. Uh, they're in the kitchen table. And uh, 
came back in front lounge like I am now, walked into the kitchen, went to open this drawer, and this voice, them scones are real, something like that it was. And I thought, eh, how can that be? Talking, Talking stones. stones. That's all we're going to be known Just for. Just one of those things that... Uh, Never. Well, you broke up flat, a bit there, Pomper. Yeah, but but I think you got we got the gist of that. So, uh, Sorry about have we that. more questions, Les? No, yeah, right. and yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to put thoughts into. Well, actually, Chuck Ace Chips uh, is putting thoughts into uh, Bob's mind here when I put this on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Doc, guys. Yeah. I think you should pay more. You should pay more. For the pay double, double for the experience, yeah. Bob. Double for the experiences, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, that's that's it for now, if you want to. Yeah. Uh, 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 we'll not ask the question, but I think Enigma's asked one, but he's not putting capital letters. Uh, but no, no worries. Uh, Steve, And we, when we talk about crazy things that people see <clears throat> and uh, this is another one that we've done before but i don't mind because it's just it's just an incredible thing and it could have been an earth phenomena and you know where i'm going with this myself you and i think it was joe dormer from yorkshire ufo society uh we we picked joe up at scarborough and we ended up at the back of staxton wald RAF base and just just kind of walk us into what happened so it was Joe's first night, going back to that thing, something shows on your first time, it was Joe's first night with us. We'd, I'd driven into Scarborough, picked him up, and we drove to the back of Staxton Wold. It was an area we'd, we'd been going to for a few months mm. because we'd had some reports and some sightings, and we did see some interesting... And we'll talk about the lights in the grass after this. But yeah. <laughs> we, we'd seen some interesting things. We saw what looked like sort of dull car headlights, old school car headlights coming up the road and then just disappear. Uh, we're expecting a car coming past any time. It didn't happen. Nowhere mm. to go, just disappeared. Um, <clears throat> but I was looking, uh, when you tend to do these things, you tend to be sort of facing each other. So one one person or one, one group would be watching one part of the sky while one's watching the other just by default. And Paul was facing the opposite direction to, to myself and Joe. And uh, Paul doesn't readily get excited, but he was literally like, oh, my God, I wish you'd seen that. Oh, you should have seen that. I can't believe what I've just seen. So he had time to see it and then describe what he'd seen. At the, at the time, Joe and I spun round, and Paul had described seeing this dome of light, which had sort of come up from the ground. It was massive. It wasn't... Yeah. Little it, thing. it covered huge. miles, I think. Would you it say it covered, covered miles? Yeah, it covered a vast area of the horizon. And he described seeing this dome of light like a turquoisey blue just, just came up and it was there. And as we spun around and, and he pointed in the right direction, off it went and he did it in front of our eyes. And it, it was it was absolutely phenomenal. I have no idea. I, we We expected to see things in the news, on social media, on, on, you know, in the news, nothing, absolutely nothing. How nobody saw or reported this thing is beyond belief because it was huge and it happened twice. The fact that it happened twice is probably the biggest puzzle. Whatever caused it to happen once, fair enough, once in a, mm. in a blue moon, but to happen twice within quick succession was, was ridiculous. It had rivulets mm. in it, like almost as if it had, like it, it, it was a raindrop runs down a window they had sort of rivulets of paler color but when people say the colors were like nothing i've ever seen before you think well surely you've seen all the colors but people who've had out of body experiences or near death experience will tell you they've seen colors that you know that they couldn't imagine but it was such a vivid color it it was it was stunning whatever it was the nearest thing i could find on the internet was um, when, if you see videos of a substation going up, there's a turquoise blue light. If a substation blows up, but it's a massive blue flash, this thing was a, a green blue dome. Mm. It's mushroom shaped. What is a mushroom shaped? 
Yeah, mushroom chair. Yeah, it's like like a yeah. cap of a mushroom. Yeah, under, in it, fact, that's what it looked like with the, with the rivulets, and it looked like a mushroom. And it came from ground up, didn't it? it, it was ground just... up. Yeah, and it formed. It came up and formed the the dome, and then disappeared. Well, like away. a mushroom. It, yeah. it did, Bob. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I was stood holding Sony VX twenty one hundred. Yeah. And, and I shouldn't have bothered explaining to Steve and Joe. I should have put the camera on and just held it. You, you learn these things, don't you? It's happened right. since, but... And, and, and don't just you think before, sorry, strange, Paul. Uh, sorry, go on. But don't you no, think well, it's I strange, think I, Paul, but when you've, got, when you've got your camera and you don't use it, why? Well, why I, that's what I was just going to get to. When it's something that truly blows you away, the taking a picture or filming it is the last thing you think about. I, I, I couldn't process what I would, I'd just seen. So all I wanted to do was explain to Joe and Steve what I'd seen because what you're trying to do is get some kind of validation. You're not, you don't, you're not desperate for somebody to believe you, but when you've seen mm. something that's spectacular, you, you 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 do want to impress upon them that you've seen it. Luckily, it did it again. Otherwise, I'd have just been left with that vis visual in my mind, and no, I've no proof of it now. But in, I've got the proof I need with Joe and Steve. If that yeah, makes sense. In, in fairness, Paul, in the brief few seconds you had to describe it, in in, in from seeing it to us turning around and seeing Probably it, again, wouldn't have got it. Yeah, you got you got it spot on. You nailed exactly what happened. And it, and it happened again. It, it was nuts. It was really was. It, it, it really was special. And, it, and and where do you think we were looking on to? Do you think Driffield? I think we were looking uh, towards yeah, Driffield. Yeah, from, from, I remember Googling. I know the Hull was a long way away. It was kind of in the direction of Hull. So, but I'm not sure what. I think it, I think Driffield might have been in in, in the line of, of sight. But, yeah, it was certainly mm -hmm. the Hull direction. But, but it weren't all lit up. It was darkness where, we were, where it yeah. happened, weren't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and we did. For anybody thinking, well, maybe Steve's just hit it on air, the substation went up. We did Google, we did look in the news, for, um, and we did look for an answer for this, not just for days, no. for weeks. Otherwise, we won't still be on about it. I'm not sure what year this would have been. It probably 2011, 2012, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit after that. But Do yeah, you think? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, so, so, yeah, it was, spe it, was, it was spectacular. Do you know how we're up... And and we'll we'll jump to something else in a minute. I, but a similar scenario. I was on the at North Landing with Peter. Who, uh, Peter will be watching us now, but not commenting. Peter, you've got to join in. I were up there with Peter, and we were up at the top, looking onto the cove of North Landing. Complete darkness, and it lit up. We both saw it. It lit up everywhere. The inlets, you know, you know the the nabs. The, the the outcrops of rock, everything, both sides of them, no shadow. It all lit up like daylight. And we're looking at it, and I've got a camera in hand, and it didn't just light up for three or four seconds. It lit up for probably 10 seconds. We were expecting, like, a boat. We're looking for any kind of explanation to come round, just floodlit. Yeah. But, even, but it couldn't have done that if it were lighting it from sea because you'd have had one side in shadow. Everything lit up. And instead of putting a camera on, I, we were just looking at it and thinking, what the hell we just witnessed? And it did it again. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It, it, it just did it again. We were both blown away by its strangeness. Who else saw it? Nobody, as far as I'm aware. But uh, it's really strange. There's no, there's no accounting for it. But uh, that that's as strange as it gets on walls. And, and do you think it were earthbound phenomena, Steve? Yes. Uh I do. I, I do. I, I've no idea what, and I've, 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 from time to time, you pick up the, the internet and and you, you search for something similar, and there's just there's just there's no reports. There's nothing. There's nothing. So I, I genuinely, had it been on a fault line of an earthquake, you could. I think somebody mentioned earthquake lights in one of the questions earlier on. You could have maybe said it was something like that, but it wasn't. It just wasn't. It was, it, no, it, it was such a strange one. Yeah, I've oh. no, I haven't even got a. What, say, what to about talk. that red light? What we saw coming up? Yeah, well, <clears throat> well, yeah, well, tell us about it, Bob. Yeah, yeah, this is we're going back. We're thing. going back to twenty twenty seventeen. Uh, June, July, August 2017. There'd been a lot of UFO activity. There'd been a lot of strange things happening. Twenty seventeen, I think it was. 
and Bob wanted to go up and have a look at the old RAF. I'll, you'll, you can fill this in in a minute, Bob, but you wanted to look at the old RAF base. You wanted to walk alongside of it, not go in it or or on the ground, but just walk alongside of it. Yeah, and there a bit of strangeness, I mean, strangeness to that well, night. Was, so tell us. There was because uh, we walked up there and you, I said, let's go to the other side of the RAF base. And he said, yeah, that, go on then. We walked up there and Paul said, we can't go any further up there now because anybody's, if he comes out, he's going to do the same. What are you doing up here? And typical thing. We turned around and walking back, Paul's phone went and Paul said, hello, can I help you? He said, yeah, my daughter's seen a cigar shaped object. I think it was at um, Garten on the Walls. Just let Garten me on the Walls. Yep. And uh, I just wanted to tell you about it. And uh, it was telling you, she said, it, I think there were a, a, a red beam down the side of it. That's right. And she said, I want to tell you something else as well. There's some strange vehicles around there at the same time. With like a, a microwave on, on the side of it. Big, the, anyway, they've got a big we, antenna or dish on them. They were up yeah, at Benton as well. At the same time. And as we were walking back, we walked a bit down and Paul said, can you see them lights? Did you see? I went, no, because I, I was waiting for my eyes to get done. And he said, do you mind if I run off? I said, yeah, by all means. So he ran off, <laughs> left me on my own. Bobby no mates on my own. So anyway, I managed to get to him uh, at the bird platform, looking out to see, can you see them lights? I said, yeah. He said, you know, triangle of lights. Under, Under the, the sea. sea. Under and the it, sea. It, it wasn't dark, was it? No, it wasn't dark. So we can see how bright so we could, they were. So we could see them in the sea. And I think we were there for about 20 minutes. And uh, we both looked over and we both turned to the right hand side and saw a rectangle red object down side of the cliff. Quite big, I would say 20 foot by 15 or whatever. And but if one of us hadn't turned, we both wouldn't have seen it. So we both turned and say, I said, What the hell is that? I, I would have thought it was bigger than that, Bob. We're looking at cliffs, it might have been bigger. Uh, uh, but the point is, it, it, it was, was below the there. ground, below the, the, the surface level, should we say, yeah. on the white chalk of the cliff that sticks out. And it, it was a, a rectangle of red light. And it just went and just switched on and off. I don't know. And it weren't night. It weren't it weren't no, dark. No, it so we'd have, we could see it. So we've got a combination of events. Yeah, yeah, we could. We've got a guy who'd rang us to tell us his daughter had seen this UFO in between Sledmere and Garten on the Walls. And there were some strange military vehicles parked in the fields. Yeah. We'd got the lights under the sea, which we've got photographs of. And this is not, we've got photographs and we can show you, but the, we, we don't really have them. We do have them. They're, they're in book three, uh, that one behind they're me. And, 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 and the, the, they're pretty before. clear photographs. And Bob got some brilliant photographs on his phone. I was using a decent Canon camera and he got better photographs. But there you go. And then we'd got this rectangle of, red light on the cliff face and all of this was happening at the same time excuse me as 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 when the animals were being fatally yeah, found on the that's cliff, right not on the cliff tops but in the fields quite close by so it, it's but fascinating a lot, well a lot of them vehicles were sighted all over Briglington weren't they hmm. various places there were there were one at Gransmore for a while and Gransmore's an interesting place. I mean, you know Gransmore, Steve, don't you? Yeah. And uh, UFO, once again, desolate places where these things are seen. You know, we know people do see UFOs. We know see people do experience unexplained phenomena. I mean, we, you, there you are in that room, Bob. It's in town. It's in a townhouse, a big old it's, Victorian yeah. house. So it happens. But a lot of the time, it's on lonely, desolate roads where... There's only Steve Ashbridge going to see it, or there's only Fred Smith going to see it as he's driving home. That it's, it seems selective, doesn't it? it? It doesn't want to be seen. But no, no it's fascinating. So I've, if you've no more to add on that, I want to jump to something else, Bob. Yeah, go on then. 
Right, well, I want to jump to Cottam and I want to jump to some uh, electronic voices because uh, and anybody in chat who's got any views on electronic voices that just that just sort of emanate out of thin air, I'd like to know what your views are or if you've experienced them, put it in a question because Steve heard some and I didn't. So I'm, I'm fascinated. And this is at Cottam in East Yorkshire, which is probably, what is it, Steve, 15 miles from Brid? Yeah, yeah, in, inland from Brick directly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was a usual spot where we used to park the car and jump out and get the cameras out. We've been going there for quite a while, and uh, it was actually next to a, a farm gate, a uh, long farm gate with a long drive, sorry. And there was a copse of trees behind us. We used to, it was quite good shelter, really, because we'd been out there in all sorts of weather. Bloody hell, yeah. Literally freezing fog, freezing ice, snow, you name it. If, if, like I say, if, if you're not there, you, you ain't going to see it. But um, one night we were stood, it wasn't a particularly uh, cold night this night, it was dark. Um, and I was just aware of this sound coming from behind us there uh, in the tree line. I just mentioned we were looking towards octon um so it was behind us sort of in the sled mare direction and i could hear this chatter going on in what sounded like it was in the bushes and i said to paul oh what's that he said what's what and i said just to cut across you the tree line let's let, tell us yeah. how close it was steve please oh it was it was so we we were sort of it was a road width away Basically, it yeah, was a road exactly. with a grass verge away. So we're talking, yeah, it's seven, seven meters or so. So very close. Um, yeah, realizing saying that the tree line could have been half a mile away, but no, yeah. it was literally right big bang behind us. And I said, what, What's that? And Paul said, What's what? And I said, That noise, that, that sound. And he said, I can't hear a sound. And it was, it was like metallic chatter coming through a radio receiver. And it was, um, it it was it was a it was a language, but it wasn't a language. If that makes sense, nothing I could recognise as English or any other language. But it was it was communicating, it was speaking, it was saying something, it was doing something, and it repeated and repeated to the point. I said, "How how can you not hear that?" Um, it went on for a, a minute. Or so. It wasn't it wasn't a fleeting couple of seconds. It was. It was about a minute of this, and, I'm, and I'm, I was scratching my head, saying, Paul, just listen, it's there. And you, you, you didn't hear a thing, did you? No. Um, no. And, and I'd love somebody, because I know you had a very similar experience in, in uh, Dane's Dyke yourself. I did, yeah. Days later. Uh, I'd love somebody to somebody else to say, God, I've heard that, or I, you know, it could have been this or it could have been that, but it was very, very... It, my my the mental image it come conjured up was a, a CB radio with somebody talking down a CB radio and receiving it at, in the tree line with this metallic voice kind of, but it, it wasn't in a language that that I recognised. Really, well, really. Odd. Obviously, it, I, I suppose obvious question, and I know I don't think you've got an answer. I know I certainly don't, but. Do you, do you think it was some kind of man-made technology that were directed at you? We were actually in line. We could see Staxton Wold from where we were. I'm not saying Staxton's anything to do with it, but we could see it. My gut feeling, my gut feeling is yes. My, for I never thought it was anything otherworldly. Uh, yeah, otherworldly. I felt like it was man-made. That was my gut feeling. That it, it was something. From from Earth, but what it was, I, I just couldn't tell you. No, really so, yeah, but when really you're talking strange. about that, Paul, oh, can you remember when Ed, we did that show with Andrew Collins? Yeah, and I do, uh, yeah. 20 minutes into it, we didn't realize until after a voice came through, Explain it, and mm. uh, Paul sent it off. To, uh, to one of his friends who's got a studio and he said it's not coming from the radio show station it's not coming from Andrew Collins' end 
It's coming from that room you and Paul are sat. Yeah, so th th yeah that, that's yeah. interesting. And I'd, I'd, well, I've obviously not forgot about it, but I'd, I'd, I'd not, I weren't thinking about it at that moment, but it's relevant, Bob. That's very good. So uh, as, we, as we talked about it at front of this live stream, at front of the show, Bob does Beacon of Light Radio, his, his own show, and I, I recommend anybody go to it who was in the live stream. What days do you do it, Bob? Wednesdays and Fridays. Wednesdays and Fridays at 8 o'clock. So is is it eight? I've got to get it right. Yeah, eight o'clock. It's seven o'clock yeah. at the moment because they put the clocks back in America next week. Okay, so let's not jump away from question then, but that that's where Bob is. So you know, let's look for Beacon of Light Radio, please. But yeah, I I joined in with Bob on one of his shows, as, and we were talking to Andrew Collins, the guy who's written uh, Light Quest and, and numerous books, absolutely been phenomenal books on subjects of un unexplained phenomena, and he appears in uh, Ancient Aliens uh, d doing their yeah, kind does, of shows. Yeah. But regardless of that, we, we're talking to Andrew, and a voice came over that went, as Bob's just said, explain it. Andrew's talking about something, and a voice out of the ether said, We didn't explain hear it. it at the beginning, but nope. after the show finished, Susan says to me, 20 minutes into the show, I heard this voice come through. I said, you're joking. She said, no, I'm not. I'll get Jennifer to announce the, the voice. And it was. It, he, he was, Andrew, on about, um, about things intercontinental and all bloody sorts. And this <laughs> voice came through and said, explain it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and it, 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 did it, 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 it was there to, to listen to. So it was. it's fascinating. And then... As, as Steve touched on after, you know, we're talking about the voice, the, the electronic voices that Steve heard at Cotton. I was 2017, 2018, found myself, like I said earlier, going into these fields in the early hours of the morning, then dropping into this wood, and I heard electronic voices. Bracken were high. My, my gut feeling was that there's, there might be somebody hunkered down in a ghillie suit or summer in Bracken talking to somebody on a walkie-talkie. That did it, did it sound like that? What you heard, Steve? Because it's it, yep. that's yep. Uh, so there was no keying, as if you know, like a, a yeah, who's keying the micro microphone, and there was no there was no um, obviously there was no electronic devices there that could be seen, but that is exactly what how I you know, sort of walkie-talkie CB mm. uh, broadcast coming through. Do you know you, you you've just you've just actually I don't mean you've you've solved a problem but you've just added another element to this. It sounded like that, but there was no none, none of that start stop the keying. Yeah, and and it unnerved me. There were a field of borage growing the purple flower. You know, I think the star flower oil yeah. they make out of it. And I thought, I, I was that unnerved. I fancied going over that field, walking through it. To, to avoid going back because I had to go back the same way. I didn't. I went back the same way because I wouldn't go through a crop if I could help it. But, yeah, it unnerved me. And then the farmer well, spoke to me. That. I don't know. The same day, he said, I was sat on – uh, everything okay? He said, yeah. He says, I heard some voices. I said – and at the opposite side, there's a field of corn or barley. I'm not sure which it was. I think it was corn. He said, I sat on my deck in the other night just having a coffee or tea. I said, oh, yeah, yeah. So I heard voices. It says where? It says there. It says where? It says in 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 that crop, about twenty foot away. No tracks in corn, nothing. And he heard it. So what? Did he say there were children? Paul, did he say there were children's voices? I couldn't remember. No, it, it, they were electronic type voices. And I know why you're going there, Bob, because we we me and you went down and spoke to him, didn't he? And he'd heard he'd heard childlike voices as well. Yes, yeah. So, as well. so, so people were either all crazy and hearing things, uh, and uh, or, or or imagining things, or were all individuals with with different levels of intellect, different uh, occupational backgrounds. Uh, but the point I'm making is, we're all singing from a similar in sheet, and and it's not just Bob, Steve, Paul, the farmer. It's, it's everywhere across the board. Lots of people are hearing this kind of thing. Uh, there's a part of me thinks that this could be something man-made that, that's, that's interacting on that 
element. I mean, I, I touched on that with you, Steve, earlier, and you said you think it could be. I don't know how it works. But I, and I'm, I'm hoping there might be some questions or some answers to this come through in chat. But uh, I, I, have, we, have we exhausted this one? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. I, 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 I would like yeah, I'd I add that if, if you hadn't have been stood next to me when I heard it, I think I would have been in the car and gone as well. Yeah. Um, well, just before we go, tell us about the fog. And is this into next plane phenomena, people? Oh, this is just phenomenal. The, the fog at the fog at uh, Cotton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we uh, oh, well, it was a little bit because that's when I saw that um, what I, whatever I saw go over my Something head. Something flew over. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, the, 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 We'd been we'd been going there for so many months, maybe even years, you could say. Um, you, we knew every light that was ground based, whether it was Staxton World, whether it was the roundabout at yeah. and whether it was the farm down the road or the farms behind us or the Humber behind. Again, we knew we knew everything. We knew where every what we call Earth light was. So then we we had a reference if we saw something in the sky or even at low level that wasn't an Earth light. We could say, well, that that wasn't there before. Um, and I, I said, I mentioned to Paul. I said, "Well, we could see Hull before." I said, "It's disappeared." Uh, oh yeah, and then and then the farm disappeared, and then the 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 light on the roundabout it often disappeared. And it's like, "Bloody hell, this fog's getting getting thick." And then the it the only light remaining was the farm down the road, which incidentally was was the one where where the guy had a, a triangle craft over his over his woods, yeah. uh, which would, I think has been mentioned before. Yeah. And then, so he was the closest light to us, and then his light disappeared. It's like, whoa, this fog's really coming in now. And by the time it enveloped us, we were 20 feet away from my car. We couldn't even see it. It just I think I've never seen fog like that. Yeah, it was just it was really nuts. thick piece of fog. And then I just looked up, and I know I mentioned it last time I was on, but... I, this black shape flew over my head. Now I've no references to the height of it, so I can't reference the size of it because the fog was so dense. But it just reminded me of the Jeepers Creepers um, creature going over. And at first I thought maybe I imagined it. Oh, did I just see something? But as I spun around and did a 180 and looked behind me, I saw it just sort of disappear. It, 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 it just went over my head and then it, it took a, a right turn and, and and, and disappeared. Um, it could have been a bat. It could have been an owl. I don't know. It just looked raggy. Um, mm, yeah. A brief, brief sort of sighting of it. But the fact well, that big. I it twice, quite big. I, did, I can't tell, Bob, because I couldn't tell with the fog being so dense. I couldn't tell how high above my head it was. So if it was thirty feet above my head, it was massive. If it was five feet above my head, it was probably that big. You know, it, mm. it was. It would have been the same thirty feet. I couldn't see my car from 20 feet away, so that tells me it must have been fairly low to be able to see it. Mm. But um, it was just an odd, an odd. I, th I think it was, it was just a strange experience. And, and I think Bob would agree and you would agree. I think a, a, we, we have to attribute a lot of what, not we see, but a lot of what everybody sees as some kind of explainable earthbound phenomena if that's the right word for it but there are things there there are things that you've seen steve bob's seen myself that that, that don't seem to fit into any of those boxes and <clears throat> the the fear that that kind of gets me every time go on bob i know i've got to change the subject here a minute uh, i think we were coming back from speed and and it was quite light and paul said what's that train doing in that field that is one Can you remember? <laughs> yeah i do yeah the, the, we we saw a train. It weren't a train. It can't have been. There's no train track. And it was, <laughs> no, and I know. The, it, 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 were, it were ground level and it looked like a train going along the field. Still can't. Scratching my head thinking. Uh, yeah, I, I, can't I, figure that one out what completely. Did, what did we see? You know, that, that were absolute. Do, yeah, and, we, and did also, did we? we did, yeah. But just to stand on it for a moment, you know, Spaten. We talk about Bempton, and like I've I've done lots of writing about Bempton. But if I were to put a a stamp in a in a location around this area where where you you're more likely to see the strangeness, I would say Speeton, without a doubt. Uh, and and I'll throw that to both of you in a moment. But the, my reasoning is that it gets no footfall. Yeah, I get lots of reports. 
in, in, in not hundreds, but I get lots of reports from Speyton, and there's hardly anybody goes, and they're seeing and experiencing things. It's only like half a mile, three quarters of a mile up coast from Bempton, but uh, it tells you that it's a place of significance. I mean, out, of the places we visited, then this is to both of you. Where, where would where would you go? Where would you want to s- spend some time observing if you if you if you could go there in next six or seven days? <clears throat> yeah, that's the best idea. I'd like to go <laughs> out there. <laughs> um, yes, uh, Peter. If you go would down go there, the hill, yeah. spend some yeah. time there, so you can spend see into the woods. There, yeah. You see, I'm, yeah, I'm I, definitely I, going I would to agree, go there. Throw that at you, Steve. What? It, it, in its in its heyday, we're, we're, for results, I, I'd like to go back to Cotton. Just because yeah. of the volume of stuff we saw, um, yeah, and where we heard, where I heard the electronic, it it may be worth spending some more time up there. And, and, yeah, and that, did we call it Butterwick? Or, I said Butter Cram, didn't I? Butterwick, yeah, the, 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 yeah, Butterwick, yeah. yeah I, I, I think that area for me that yielded the most results. But saying that, the first few times you go to Benton and you see these lights in the sky, and and we in fact we had EVP which. I've done EVP many times and not had results or you know things you could call a result, but at Benton we had an absolute winner and it, it was it was a, it was nailed on, um, yeah. and it was indisputable and, that it was yeah, and, a, a voice speaking on on, on the recording. Was, oh, and do you know we've been? I know Les is here, so we're going to have some questions. So we'll not go to hotels too sharp, but we've been getting incredible results with EVP and EMF. The, you know, because I know we use we voice are. recorders, me and you, Steve, but the AMF. And I need to just put a word in for Alex because I, t- I touched on uh, Linny and Peter earlier who come to Clifftops with us, but uh, Alex has been coming up and he's been really getting involved with EMF meter stuff. And, uh, yeah, fair crack because he travels a fair distance. And, and, and so does Amanda. There's so many people support what we're doing. But let's just go to Les and see what we've got. Put your mic on. Hold on. Mike, Les, Les, microphone, please. Okay, right. I, I, I'm, I'm saying this jokingly, but this kind of thing I would do because he's sat there observing. He's got to sit there for two hours, so full credit to Les. Yeah, so. I only turn it off because you, you don't hear all me coughing from me excessive smoking. No, so. no, it's, it's all good. You don't <laughs> Right, it's, yeah, no. Uh, okay, so let's have a look then. I've got a question here from... The Rev. Uh, a question for Bob. Tell us about the death chair. <laughs> just just Rev to say the death chair. Right, what, hey. <laughs> you know that. Uh, when I moved into this flat, Paul said, Do you have a recliner? I went, well, if you if you're not doing all with it, um this is you, not unexplained phenomena, it. people, but it's quite funny. Basing it already. I said, You what? He said, It's just two people died in it. And it's a standing joke with even my grandchildren. People have died in it. It's strange, but I feel comfortable in it. Uh, I'm not saying uh, I feel any energy. I just feel comfortable. My feet up, I can relax. It's wonderful. But it's we wonderful. call it. I still call it the death chair myself. It's a great chair to die in. Uh, I'm sorry for saying <laughs> that. But, <laughs> but, uh, listen, uh, uh, hey, at least you know that Bob can have a smile on his face because I might be. Anyway, let me stop. <laughs> okay, right. So, uh, question, uh, yeah, yeah, well, it's, yeah. It's a good story that one, uh, Bob. Thanks, um, Rev. Yeah. Uh, if if when your time comes, uh, I don't think uh, you'll be yeah. passing it on to Paul, will you? That chair? No, I passed it on to him. I don't want it. Yeah. I don't want. You don't want it back. No. Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, the black okay, spot. <laughs> Blue shift. He's asking question for all. Uh, do you use iron iron like say a horseshoe to fend off the phenomena? So if you're getting all this phenomena, a lot of it will Paul, Bob, uh, psychically or or what have you. 
and obviously Steve has had its experiences. It, it, does he well, worry it, and do you use anything to fend it off? Well, I'll just kick it off because it's Bob and Paul's show. I, I, I don't blow shift, Rob, and a great question, but I know that it goes back hundreds of years that farmers would stake iron into the earth as some form of protection. This guy could probably tell them, tell yeah. us more than I know about it. But any any views on this, Bob, Steve? I personally don't. Um, uh, like you no, said, I've, I've never. I don't. I just protect myself. Well, has anybody thought why they put an horseshoe on a door? Because uh, it's, 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 it's the iron. Is it? Is it the lucky horseshoe, or is it the actual iron? Mm, that's the iron. It with, you, you know. Uh, great question, I Rob. Bro, and, and I don't really, have the knowledge, mate. It depends what you're looking at. Maybe we need Rob on 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 Blue Shift on on live stream. It'd be an interesting guy to have on. But yeah, yeah, I got a question, and I know you've just talked about this, uh, but I'll, I'll put the question up from Wendy Rose anyway. Has Bob or Steve seen a mist as in paranormal experience? And if so, did it give you a feeling? No, I know you talked about the fog and the thick fog, Steve, but uh, <laughs> uh, a paranormal experience through mist. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know me, I know me, and Paul of. Have... We've had the fog at Benton come round us as well. Mm, it just did, enclosed but, but us completely. But do you think that were paranormal, Bob, or just atmospherics? I've, I don't know. I don't know. We've lost Bob there. Um, a... Sorry, I, I, I can't tell if Bob's speaking because he's broken up on my phone. Yes, he's, kind of yeah, he's, he's broken up altogether, no. Steve. No worries, Bob. <laughs> you, we'll, we'll come back to Bob in a moment. Go on, Steve. My interest in yeah. my, oh, oh. my sort of interesting uh, example of, of, of weird fog was actually in Benton Bunker years ago uh, when right. you could still get in. I'm not I'm not condoning going in there. It's it's uh, a dangerous place. But back in the day, we, I went in a few times, and the light. In fact, I think. It's, I think I no, I went in once more subsequently after that. But the, one of the times I'd gone in, um, for anybody who knows the layout of a rotor building, you go you go in what looks like um, a bungalow. It's just disguised as a regular bungalow, and you go down some concrete stairs. They wind around, and then you find yourself in a in a corridor about hundred meters long. Um, I think that's about right, Paul. Yeah. And we get down into the tunnel, and it was completely, completely full of fog. And I've never known fog in a tunnel. I've Googled it. If somebody might tell me it is an atmospheric, brilliant. I hope you do. But this was really pea soup. And it's already pitch black down there. So you can imagine torches weren't doing much good. So we got to the end of the tunnel through the fog. And there was a blast. There's the blast doors as you go through into the bunker, the main body of the bunker. When we went into the bunker, there was nothing in the bunker at all. It was purely in the tunnel. And while we were in the in the bunker, um, I had a <laughs> scary experience. But it wasn't turned out not supernatural, but weird, all nonetheless. I was stood in a doorway, so there was four of us in there, uh, including myself, and I just felt a tap on my shoulder. And the, the, the guys I was with were in front of me, so I knew it was none of them. So I sort of and I spun around, and 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 the lintel in the doorway had been there since the. 40s 50s i think paul 40s um, yeah. and it just decided at that minute it had enough and it, it rotted enough that it was going to come and tap me on the shoulder so that 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 kind of freaked me out a bit but then oh. this voice this this voice from nowhere just sort of went hello mm -hmm. and we all looked at each other and we're like there's nobody in there we've been to the end of the bunker and back there's nobody in there and we distinctly heard this inquisitive hello and we all sort of shrugged it off but we could tell that everybody was really uneasy so we we, we oh should, should we leave now yeah yeah let's go so off we went no more than 10 minutes after we'd gone in and we got to the tunnel and the fog was completely gone completely gone there was no trace of it so from really thick couldn't see through it fog to nothing in the space of 10 minutes and, and for the fog to be below ground as well 
I mean, what year was this, Steve? What what we're looking uh, at? That would have been about. Mm. Um, Not that the year has any bearing on the on the four. Two thousand nine ish. Right. Two thousand nine. I know it was it, it, one of my cousins with me, and they were married in twenty ten, and it was before then. So I'm going to say eight or nine, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's a strange one, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Wendy. Gavin's still crazy. I had a succubus experience. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing you're all familiar with that. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've touched yeah. on it earlier. Yeah, well, five, yeah, you, you did. Yeah, about five years ago, and then I had lots of sleep paralysis. And about um, one month ago, I had the first auditory hallucination with it. It was a sinister giggle. Was the uh, was that? That's interesting. It, it, it is fascinating and auditory. So, so you know, you're aware, Gavin, of some kind of voice phenomena should we say occurring while you're actually in this this state this sleep paralysis you know i, I think the sleep paralysis is a state that nat we naturally can get into yeah yeah but it's a state that we can naturally get into but i think if we've got this external to. phenomena i think to be in that state it's a it's allowing it to enter into our sphere of existence. How we get into that state, I don't know. Well, whether we use, and I'm not saying we're suggesting we should do, whether you we use hallucinogenics or or some other type of uh I don't know, a dietary supplement. That's an easy word, isn't it? To to to, to enhance that. Uh I, I really don't yes, know. Better. Because we, because we know in shamanic practice they'll use ayahuasca, the vine of the dead, and things like that. And the I'm not saying that that's the sleep paralysis people, but there's the similarities to be drawn from it. Amazing to to hear this giggle that seems external to your experience. You, you've definitely, to me, you've entered it's some giggle. other sphere yeah. of existence, or it's coming to yours. Any views? Gosh, uh, you're... <laughs> I don't know. No. Okay. Well, I mean, my, my experience was bad enough. Um, but I didn't have any auditory or anything. Like no, that. it's fa it's fa fascinating that Gavin. Honestly, yeah, Gavin's got another question in. Uh, uh, Bob, when you had your shadow man experiences, has anyone seen them with you? Was anybody else in your presence? Anybody else with you, Bob? No, I saw. I've always it's always been on my own. Sorry. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's always been on when I've seen them. Unfortunately. Yeah. But I've got a council out to uh, start for you. Well, sure, well, Jack, well, yeah, I've got a field camera now anyway. Bob's got a trail cam that he said he's going to keep putting up. But I need to stress, because your, your, your internet's breaking up a bit there, Bob. Bob does not drink alcohol, does not do any kind of substance of any kind. Sorry. So it's pretty no you don't be sorry bob that's that's the way of the things and i think mary's internet's playing up tonight to be honest with you as well uh but you know there's 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 no there's nothing at play with bob's experiences it they're, they're just sort of it's quite raw steve you were going to say something oh no it's true that i just i just just asking bob but you just you've just clarified it whether he had uh, jack daniels with him when he saw no him. no he don't drink <laughs> Okay, Gavin's got another question in. Uh, what are the gang's thoughts on no. the theory about earthquake lights? Well, I don't think it's a theory, is it? Is it, Gavin? I mean, I think we know that with these vast movements underground, the tectonic plates kind of touching, they, they create these these lights. But we're not, in, as far as I'm aware, we're not in a location where we're going to get earthquake lights over the sea or on the walls. Uh, and the, the, if that's what you're alluding to, and and uh, and I think there's there's some kind of awareness to what we're looking at. I, I always believe, or believe, should I say that? I always think there is. Any theories? Any thoughts on this? Well, no, you, you, I, I think the same as you, Paul. I think I think there is there's, there's plasma that appears, or seems to be some kind of plasma with the with the earthquake. Tectonic plates rub together, but that, like you said, that's not what that isn't what happens on the walls because you just. Don't I don't think so. No. And if you was Bob. No. No. Okay. No. Okay. I yeah. 
sorry, would you come in there, Bob? Right. The, I think the internet's slowing us. Uh, no, no, is any more? Fantastic t-shirt. Yeah, thank you, Jessica. Yeah, it's really cool, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. From Jojo. And, uh, Jojo. Especially Jojo. as the Beatles have just released their... Uh, last. Last. And I think that's what Record. we're alluding to. Yeah, yeah so... Oh, Absolutely. Okay, so a question from Nick and Nim. Is it psychic to, to get the feeling of being watched? It's a good question. I, I can't really answer that. I, I, is it, do you mean, are we perceiving um, it, Nick? It is a good... What do you think, Bob? I don't know about that, really. Um, are we being what? Do you think it's psychic? Um, no, I would say no, 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 okay. You know, when I when I when I got frightened that time up there, I didn't ask for, I didn't ask for help from from spiritualism or anything like that. I just know something, someone was watching me. I picked it up. Okay. I, think, I, think it, I think it comes back to the tune. I would it? say it's a psychic. Okay, right. Yeah, well, good to see. Right, thanks, Bob. I think it comes back to the tuning in thing. Whether whether you're in tune with it, you, you you might just be picking up on it, on that on that feeling. I it sounds crazy. I, I walk my dog every night late. I like walking late when it's dark. Put my pod, put a spooky podcast on or a, a truth proof live stream on the podcast. Mm, that's the way. Yeah, <laughs> my phone. And um, so I'm always listening to something. Spooky. I'm used to walking down the street listening to ghost stories and expecting a hand to tap me on the shoulder. But there was one instance where I, from from leaving the house to coming home, I was convinced convinced I was being followed. Just it, it's and I go down quite a I call it dirty path. It's a tree covered path. It's it's mud. It's, it's not paved. Um, so it's it's a creepy little place to be. But I go down there hundreds of times it doesn't bother me in the slightest but a couple of times when the dog refused to walk down there I just sat down mm. and wouldn't walk but one night from I walked down there to the beach along the prom all the way to to a, a, a pub I didn't go in the pub spun around came back and home it's probably half a mile in total maybe a bit more and from leaving the door to coming home I was convinced somebody was behind me it's strange yeah, it was really odd. I don't, don't know what, what perception. Mm. Alison is there. Got a question from Alison Bottle. Hi, Bob. What's the strangest experience you've had, uh, Bob? What's the strangest? We've got three minutes, Bob. I so a few as well. Um... Oh my god! <laughs> um. Coming out of that wall there, this corner of the, a wall there, I thought I saw the a horse beam. come out of it one night. When I was sat yeah, outside of that wall there. That, that's strange. A horse uh -huh. in a room coming out oh, of I've never heard the corner of a wall. 30 foot in air. That's, that's, that is strange. Steve, throw yeah. it to Steve now. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what else as well. Oh, we won't throw it to Steve. Go on, Bob. Yeah. Go on, Bob. Quick. No. Oh, the alien in the in the mirror. Yeah. In my oh, lounge, yeah. What I saw. That's strange as well. Yeah. Do, do you know, Bob? We, 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 we've we've literally got two minutes, so we'll just ask Steve the same question. It, it, I haven't got. To, it, it'll take two, two longer than two minutes to describe the the, the story. But basically, it was uh, something that moved around in the bedroom, not once but twice. Uh, the first time I put it down to, I, well, I couldn't explain it the first time, but I, I just kind of tried to to shrug it off. And then twenty minutes later, the same thing happened, and it just couldn't have happened um, without having some kind of external. Um, uh, force applied to it, and it just absolutely freaked me out. And that was that was we're going back to your initial thing about when did you start to believe that that was one that I just cannot 
Okay, all right. I've got to cut across you there, Steve, because this is the last one of the night. Last question of the night, Dark Angel. If you could solve any phenomena in the world, what would it be? I'll just briefly say it because I want these two to have last answer. Any phenomena, I think we're dealing with the same thing, Dark Angel. So uh, I just I just want to try and give the ultimate proof, which I'm not going to be able to do, I don't think, of, of what, we're, what we're involved in because I think we're all looking at the same thing regardless of what genre you're looking at. Go on. I think I think for me it's it's the the um, the alien lights in the sky phenomena. Okay. I, I, my interest was always with with ghosts and spirits and poltergeists and stuff like that. But I've always been interested in all facets. But I think I, I, that's the one I want to know the answer to most. Bob, a minute. We, we're actually times up, Bob. I'd like Bob. to know the answers about werewolves and bigfoot. The werewolves Thank and you. bigfoot. They said it right. werewolves and Bigfoot. I'd look no more. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, Les, you've got the final word, Les. Brilliant. Tell us about yeah, Wolfland. No. Tell us about Wolflands. Wolflands can be bought if you want to buy it, rent it. Uh, you can see the banner behind me. I'll get it right. This finger is pointing towards the Amazon uh, buy or rent. Uh, just type in Wolflands, you'll come across the film. And uh, yeah, I think it's still in the top 100, isn't it, Paul, that one? Yeah. It's been in for 10 weeks. It's, it's incredible, Still in the really. top 100. Yeah, and thanks for all the support. The people who have bought it or rented it, it's been uh, great to see uh, uh, that. Right, on that note then, guys, it's uh, been really fascinating show and some of the accounts and stories that Steve's come out with and Bob's come out with has been truly, truly fascinating. Absolutely. And obviously, and uh, you said at the top of the show, Paul, you said, I'm coming back to base level here. This is where it all started. Uh, it, it is. Uh, these then, these then two Bob. have been, yeah. been like, the, the, they're as active as what I am. And, and I've just full appreciation. Hey, Steve, for giving us your time. You've had a busy day at work. Bob's been busy at work. From me and Les, thank you. Really appreciate it. Thanks yeah, for your thanks time, guys. Uh, Sky for sending the... Hey, uh, hey, yeah, thank thanks, you. Thanks to Sky for sending the, uh, the questions through. Thanks, Sky. And before I go... It will be uh, thanks for the super chats from Danny Egan, Enigma, Joe, 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 Bobby Dazzler, and I think the Sheep Man 2020. Thanks for your support. And on that Excellent. note, we're going Thank to end you. the stream for tonight and we'll see you all next Thank time. You. I'm sorry for the questions that I didn't get ready. I think there was about four or five, but we'll see you next time. Bye.